The Origin of Man, Evolution or Intelligent Design, A Modern Quranic Understanding The question of evolution or intelligent design is a controversial topic around the world today. Creationists are certain that there was a creator who designed everything, while evolutionists believe that evolution on its own brought us into existence. It was Charles Darwin in his 1859 book, on the origin of species, who introduced the theories of natural selection and common descent, which gave rise to this heated debate. In 1871, in his second large book on evolution, The Descent of Man, Darwin applied his two theories to human evolution. In the Muslim world, human evolution was completely rejected without any consideration. The Muslim religious scholars at the time of Darwin were not fluent in English, nor were they well educated in science. Therefore, most of them did not have the skills needed to investigate the Qur'an in light of scientific findings. Once they declared evolution is wrong, it just stayed that way. Evolution, a fact and a theory. When non-biologists talk about biological evolution, they often confuse two different aspects of the definition. On the one hand, there is the question of whether or not modern organisms have evolved from older ancestral organisms, or whether modern species are continuing to change over time. On the other hand, there are questions about the mechanism of the observed changes. How did evolution occur? Biologists consider the existence of a biological evolution to be a fact. It can be demonstrated today, and the historical evidence for its occurrence in the past is overwhelming. However, biologists readily admit that they are less certain of the exact mechanism of evolution. There are several theories of the mechanism of evolution. Punctuated equilibrium is a theory about how new species evolve that was first advanced by American paleontologists Niall Eldridge and Stephen J. Gould in 1972. Although controversial, punctuated equilibrium has stimulated fruitful debate about speciation, or the birth of new species, and the fossil record, and has, in recent years, won at least partial acceptance among evolutionary biologists. Before punctuated equilibrium, most scientists assume that evolutionary change occurs slowly and continuously in almost all species, and that new species originate either by slow divergence from parental stock of subpopulations or by slow evolutionary transformations of the parental stock itself. Punctuated equilibrium proposes that most species originate relatively suddenly, over tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years rather than millions of years assumed by traditional theory, and then do not evolve significantly for the rest of their time on Earth. Most species thus have a sudden or punctuated origin and then remain in stasis or equilibrium until extinction. Eldridge and Gould propose punctuated equilibrium to explain one of the most notable features of the fossil record. Most species seem to appear suddenly, already clearly differentiated from the earlier similar species from which they presumably evolved, and then remain unchanged until becoming extinct. Traditional evolutionary theory proposed that gradual evolutionary changes are rarely observed in the fossil record because that record is radically incomplete. Fossils form only under certain special conditions. Fossil-bearing rocks are eroded as well as deposited, and our knowledge even of those fossils that have been formed is fragmentary. Eldridge and Gould agree that the fossil record is incomplete, but contend that it could not be incomplete enough to account for the near-complete absence of gradualistic change in the fossil record. Rather, they propose, species normally originate too quickly for normal geologic processes to record the event. Fossil remains in DNA, evidence of previous human species. Neanderthals were first recognized as a distinct group of hominids from fossil remains discovered 150 years ago at Fieldhofer in Neander Valley outside Dusseldorf, Germany. Subsequent Neanderthal finds in Europe and Western Asia showed that fossils with Neanderthal traits appeared in the fossil record about 400,000 years ago and vanished about 30,000 years ago, just at the time when the first modern humans appeared in Europe. In 1997, a segment of mitochondrial DNA, or mtDNA, of the Neanderthal-type specimen found at Fieldhofer was sequenced. 
Analysis showed that it falls outside the variation of contemporary humans and shares a common ancestor with mtDNAs of present-day humans approximately half a million years ago. Subsequently, mtDNA sequences have been retrieved from 11 additional Neanderthal specimens. Although some of these sequences are extremely short, they are all more closely related to one another than to a modern human mtDNA. In a paper published in the November 2006 issue of the scientific journal Nature, scientists with the U.S. Department of Energy's Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory and the Joint Genome Institute, or JGI, have sequenced genomic or nuclear DNA from fossilized Neanderthal bones. Their results show that the genomes of modern humans and Neanderthals are at least 99.5% identical. But despite this genetic similarity, and despite the two species having cohabitated the same geographic region for thousands of years, there is no evidence of any significant crossbreeding between the two. Based on these early results, Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis last shared a common ancestor approximately 500,000 years ago. The results are also in agreement with previous results that Neanderthal mtDNA fall outside the variation of modern humans. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَى قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Will they not then contemplate on the Qur'an, or are there locks on the hearts? Muslims believe that the Qur'an is the literal word of Allah revealed to his messenger, Muhammad, through the angel Gabriel. The glorious Qur'an consists of 114 chapters, each made of a varying number of verses. The above verse invites everyone to study and research the Qur'an with an open heart. Allah increases in the creation whatever He wills. In the Holy Qur'an, Allah says, Alhamdulillahi fatiri samawati wal ardi ja'ilil malaikati rusulan uli ajnihatim mathna wa thulatha wa ruba' yazidu fil khalqi ma yasha'u inna allaha ala kulli shay'in qadir. Praise be to Allah, originator of the heavens and the earth, who makes the angels messengers having wings, two or three or four. He increases in the creation whatever he wills. Certainly, Allah is capable of all things. This is the first verse of chapter 35 entitled Fatr, or the Originator. According to an early Islamic scholar, al Tabari, this increase in creation is not limited to the angels, but applies to all of Allah's creation. al Tabari states in his Quranic commentary, وَكَذَانِكَ ذَلِكَ فِي جَمِعِ خَلْقِهِ يَزِيدُ مَا يَشَاءُ فِي خَلْقِ مَا شَاءَ مِنْهُ وَيَنْقُصُ مَا شَاءَ مِنْ خَلْقِ مَا شَاءَ and that is the case in all his creation. He increases whatever he wills in the creation of what he willed of it, and decreases whatever he willed from the creation of what he willed. This increase or decrease can include the number of limbs, body size, or even the level of intelligence. Evolution is a gradual process in which something changes into a different and usually more complex or better form. In biology, Evolution is the change in the inherent traits of a population of organisms from one generation to the next. Microevolution refers to a small evolutionary change within a species or population. On the other hand, macroevolution refers to any evolutionary change at or above the level of species. In other words, the species splits into two separate species, or that species changes into another over time. Adam Successor to previous human species. In the Holy Quran, Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةٌ قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءَ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ and when your Lord said to the angels, I am placing in the earth a successor, they said, You would place in it who does mischief in it and sheds blood, and we celebrate your praises and glorify you? He said, I know what you do not know. What caused the angels to believe that this new successor, Homo sapiens, is a savage 
who is a source of mischief or harm, and a shedder of blood. And what was it that Allah knew and the angels did not know? The most logical answer to the first question, in light of the discovered fossil remains and DNA evidence, is that the angels presumed that Adam was the like of someone they had encountered before, a predecessor who was from the humankind and looked physically similar to Adam, and whose life on earth was marked by doing harm and shedding blood. The answer to the second question is found in verse 2.31-33, next poster. The Arabic word Khalifa, Khalifa ay khalafa fulanun fulanun fi hadha al-amr idh qama maqamahu fihi ba'da. Translated as successor literally means one who replaces someone else who left or died and assumes their responsibilities. Neanderthal, who became extinct about 30,000 years ago, is thought to be the most recent human species prior to modern man. Archaeologists believe that they lived in clans, were territorial, and likely practiced female abduction. Many adult Neanderthal fossils have serious injuries, suggesting that their lives were extremely dangerous and that they had a warmongering nature. Adam, increased level of intelligence. In the Holy Quran, Allah says, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِي بِأَسْمَاءِ هَؤُلَاءِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ قَالُوا سُبْحَانَكَ لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَّمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ قال يا آدم أنبئهم بأسمائهم فلما أنبأهم بأسمائهم قال ألم أقل لكم إني أعلم غيب السماوات والأرض وأعلم ما تبدون وما كنتم تكتمون. And he taught Adam the names, all of them, and then he displayed them to the angels and said, Tell me the names of these things, if you were truthful. They said, Praise to you, we have no knowledge except what you have taught us. Verily, it is you who is the perfect in knowledge, the wise. He said, O Adam, tell them their names. And when he told them their names, he said, Did I not tell you that I know the secrets of the heavens and the earth, and I know what you reveal and what you were concealing? From these verses, we can see that Allah's intention for asking the angels to inform him of the names of the displayed objects, and then asking Adam to inform the angels of their names, was to demonstrate to the angels that their knowledge is limited to what he taught them, and that Adam is not the savage they presumed him to be. The fact that Adam was able to learn and store in his memory the names of all objects taught to him by Allah, and then upon seeing them again was able to recognize them, recall their names from his memory, and articulate them cr all correctly to the angels indicates a high level of intelligence, a fact the angels did not know. With such a level of intelligence, this new successor would be able to worship Allah in ways that neither his predecessor nor the angels ever could. Archaeologists believe that Neanderthal had limited spoken language with a small vocabulary and simple grammar. In the Holy Quran, Allah says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Will they not contemplate on the Quran? And if it had been from other than Allah, they would have found therein much discrepancies. The above verse serves as a guide when studying and researching the Qur'an. It indicates that since the source of the Qur'an is Allah, verses in the Qur'an will support and not contradict one another. Therefore, for much of this research, the Qur'an is used to explain the Qur'an.